And now, WJCL News, working for you. Good evening to you. I'm Jennifer Andrews. We're on the air with some breaking news at this hour. An emergency landing at the Hunter Army Airfield. It happened about 3.30 this afternoon. WJCL was first on the scene. Delta Flight 1947 could not land because of the severe weather, causing a fuel emergency. WJCL's Ashley Lincoln is live. She is right there at the scene at Hunter Army Airfield. Ashley, what do we know so far? Yeah, Jennifer, as you mentioned, Jennifer, as you mentioned, we were the first crew here on the scene. As you can see behind me, that's Delta Flight 1947. It made its way from LaGuardia Airport here to the Savannah area. It left LaGuardia around 1155 this morning, and it made that emergency landing here at Hunter Army Airfield around 4 o'clock this afternoon. Now, what happened was the plane was in a holding pattern near the Savannah Airport preparing to land, but it could not land because of this storm that we have over past us. So what they were doing, they were in a circling motion where they were just flying around in circles. And because of that, they started to run low on fuel and they had to make an emergency landing here at Hunter Army Airfield. Now, this plane behind me is the 155 passengers and that's how many passengers are on board. It is a full flight and what's going to happen now with those passengers for what we know right now they are going to stay on board that air aircraft while it refuels here at hunter army air base and once it gets all the fuel it needs it will head back to savannah airport now this plane once it heads to savannah airport it will depart and go to atlanta before going back to laguardia again this plane made an emergency landing here at hunter army airfield around 4 p.m this afternoon it is the md-88 it holds over 5,000 gallons of gas but for what we know right now no passengers were injured everything's okay on board but they're just waiting to get that plane refueled before taking back off okay uh, I was going to have a quick question for Ashley, and meantime, though, I'll check back with her in just a moment. I was going to ask her how long they may be out there on that flight line, but I'll check back with her in just a moment. Meantime, let's check out the map that that flight actually took. There you will be able to see it is going to be a blue line, and that will show you the path that the flight was supposed to take. And then you'll also be seeing, there it is, you will also see a yellow line, which is what it actually did take. And you can see it held between Augusta and Atlanta and circled several times in the middle of Georgia. Let's check out the Boeing MD-88. According to the Boeing website, well, the plane is a quiet, fuel-efficient twin jet. The MD-88s are more than 149,000 pounds. The MD-88 is 147 feet long. It accommodates a maximum of 172 passengers. Again, there were 155 passengers on this particular flight. We will have more on the breaking news situation. Meantime, we should check with Jeff because all of this started because of a weather situation. That's right, Jennifer. It's been very stormy out there this afternoon. We've had reports of about 6,000 people right now in parts of Chatham County without power due to the storm. There's been a lot of lightning. So let's get right to it on our live radar. Let me show you what we're tracking across the area. See very heavy rain that's uh, heading south of Pooler. It's uh, letting up some now out the uh, Savannah Airport where it was coming down really hard just a little bit ago. Now let's zoom in here a little bit and I'll show you exactly what's going on right now. Again, we head out towards the airport and things are looking better out here than it was just say about 30 to 45 minutes ago. Also heading over toward uh, Hunter Army Airfield. Things are starting to rain out there. Not as bad though as out towards the west. Again, we're looking at Hunter Army Airfield uh, right out in this area here where the plane is now. We do have some rain in there, but it looks like the worst of the rain is going to be staying a little bit back off towards the uh, west. All right, we're going to zoom back out here and take another look at the storm. We can see there was some pink in there, and uh, there was a report of some hail. Let's check out some uh, storm reports here. Uh, we have a report here of some hail along uh, near I-16. Uh, we had a hail a report of penny to nickel size about a mile southwest of the I-16 I-95 interchange, uh, close to one-inch hail. 
And then we also had a report of lightning striking the uh, U.S. Customs and Border Protection Building in Garden City. So uh, a lot of stuff going on with this particular storm. Of course, the plane forced to fly around. And uh, but right now, again, the rain is on the uh, diminishing trend. As we look this, we can see it's drifting to the south. Uh, heaviest right now is located between I-16 and Richmond Hill. Again, some very heavy rain there as well. We don't have any severe thunderstorm warnings in effect right now. We do have quite a bit of lightning. Here's a look at some of the lightning that's still showing up there south of I-16 and off to the west of Richmond Hill. We'll continue to track that, of course. We've got other areas seeing some heavy rain as well, heading up through Effingham County, through Screven County, into Hampton County, and also over into the Vidalia area. We're seeing some uh, heavy rain and quite a bit of lightning showing up there. So we'll continue to track the storms uh, right now. Back to you. Thanks, Jeff. Again, an emergency landing at the Hunter Army Airfield. It happened about 3.30 this afternoon. WJCL first on the scene. It's Delta Flight 1947. Could not land because of the severe weather. Ashley Lincoln has been out there keeping an eye on the situation for us. Ashley, any idea how long those people are going to be out there on that flight line? I understand there's like 155 people on board. Can you hear me, Ashley? Yes, Jennifer. Well, the initial reports that we got is that they're going to wait until the initial reports that we got, Jennifer, is that they're going to wait until the storm passes over. They're expecting an hour, but it could be longer than an hour, depending on what Mother Nature decides. But they're going to wait until it clears out why they refill until it's safe for them to go back in the air and head to Savannah Airport. Okay, one last question, Ashley. I assume it was a smooth landing. No injuries, you said earlier. So I guess no problems with the landing? No problems with the landing that we know as of yet. We got out here a little earlier when it was a little clearer outside and we could see the plane and we didn't see any um, emergency vehicles around it or anything. But early reports that we've confirmed that there were no injuries on board the plane or any um, damage done to the plane in this emergency flight. It looks like it just was very low on fuel. They knew they were low. They took precautions and found a runway here at Hunter Army Airfield, got clearance and landed here. All right, thanks, Ashley. Ashley Lincoln reporting for us live at Hunter Army Airfield with the latest on the breaking news situation out there. Of course, we'll be checking back with her as the information becomes more available and any updates that do come in. And we do have new details tonight with the Savannah Chatham Metro Police merger. There continues to be disagreement between the city and the county. Well, yesterday, Savannah Alderman said that the cooperation has stalled. Today, county commissioners responded. WJCL's Nick Dottario talked with county leaders today and joins us now with the very latest. Nick? Well, they're a little confused about comments made by city leaders. They want to cooperate, the county that is, but fear the merger deal might be falling apart. You might remember the police department merged more than a decade ago, a deal meant to make it safer throughout the city and unincorporated areas. Since then, the two sides haven't changed the contract. City leaders say the county owes them one and a half million dollars, an amount the county disagrees with because it feels the cost allocation needs to be changed. Right now, the funding is based on population. The county would like to pay based on several factors, including population, police calls, and crime statistics. But it appears there's disagreements on how the negotiations are going. We have been working under what we thought was a spirit of cooperation. But it seems like that spirit of cooperation is going away. We want to speak to each other. It's an important agreement. And uh, I want uh, the city listening to know that we, we do cooperate. The county gave the city a series of changes it wants to make. The city has not commented on the draft, and right now, Savannah leaders are currently working on their own proposal. County leaders say they want to see policy changes adopted by the city by the end of September and financial changes by the end of November. Now, Jennifer, of course, if the county decides to go ahead and dissolve the merger altogether, it would take a year and a half before all that could happen. All right. Well, stay tuned. Appreciate it. Thank you, Nick. You're welcome. All right, coming up in an hour, county leaders explain why they don't believe they owe $1.5 million. We'll let you know what their explanation was coming up tonight at 6.
Well, county leaders also responded to our story last night where some in City Hall took exception to the coverage that we've given to recent gun violence. Alderman Van Johnson told us the media is creating an alarmist situation. Well, this came after Metro Police told City Council gun violence is down this year despite 24 shootings in a month. Today, county leaders expressed disappointment in Johnson's statements. Coming up at 6, hear for yourself what commissioners had to say about City Hall's reaction. We have tragic news tonight. A Fort Stewart soldier is killed in a head-on collision. Fort Stewart officials say it happened near Glenville on Highway 196. 36-year-old Staff Sergeant Joseph Cunningham and two others were killed around 1 o'clock Thursday morning. No word yet on what caused the two-car wreck. Cunningham just arrived from Kansas. He was going to be a member of the 3rd ID band. Staff Sergeant Cunningham served more than 17 years, including two deployments to Afghanistan. Police are asking for the public's help in one of the recent shootings in Savannah. Metro Police are trying to find 38-year-old Leonardo Scott.